welcome to worship. I'm going to read the scripture for you for Sunday, May 8th. The Covenant Tablets, Exodus 32, 15 through 16 from the Common English Bible. Moses then turned around and came down the mountain. He carried the two covenant tablets in his hand. The tablets were written on both sides from front and back. The tablets were God's own work. What was written there was God's own writing inscribed on the tablets. The fifth commandment, Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother so that your life will be long on the fertile land and that the Lord your God is giving you. Mark, chapter 7, verses 6 through 13 from the NIV Bible. Jesus told the religious leaders, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachers are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corbin, that is, devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus, you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and you do many things like that. In our last scripture for today, from John chapter 19, verses 25 to 27 from the Common English Bible. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene stood near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Hi, and welcome to worship. My name is Pastor Michelle Hoff, and I serve the Arlington and the Poinette Inch United Methodist Churches as their pastor. And happy Mother's Day for those of you who are mothers or mother figures. We're going to continue our sermon series on the Ten Commandments, but we're going to skip forward to the Fifth Commandment, which is to honor your father and your mother. So would you please join me in prayer as we open our service time together? Eternal God, we have given you thanks for the gift of time and age and those in our lives who have passed down so much wisdom and love to us. Help us today to better understand the command to honor our parents and our elders. Thank you for your presence with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to talk to you about honoring your mother and your father. And I'm going to start off by imagining yourself back as a teenager, or if you're currently a teenager, what it's like for you today. So as I was a teen, I was shopping with my girlfriend in Chicago where I lived and we were um, after school shopping and we needed to get our candy striper uniforms for start of our work as candy stripers at a local nursing home. But because this is a specialty outfit, we couldn't go to just any store. We had to go to a specialty uniform store. And so to do that, we had to take some buses to get there. So if we was after school, um, my parents were very firm that I was to be home by dinner time. Well, it took a little longer than we expected to get everything sorted out at the uniform shop and get everything ordered. Before we knew it, we, got, we went out the door and we had just missed our bus. Oh my gosh. And I knew I was in big, big trouble. And back in those days, we didn't have cell phones. So there was no way for me to call my parents except to look for a pay phone. Well, we started walking home. If we would have walked, it probably would have taken an hour and a half to make it home. So, but we started walking and of course we were hungry because we were teenage girls and um, we saw McDonald's. So we stopped in and we had a big Mac meal. Then we had enough strength to continue our walk towards home where, along the way, we saw a payphone. 
I didn't want to, but I knew I needed to. I got on the phone, uh, put my probably a dime back in those days, put my dime in, maybe at the most a quarter, and called my home. And my mom answered, where are you? Where are you? I, mean, I was so worried. And I explained how we missed our bus. And well, within 30 minutes, there was my dad pulling up in his big brown station wagon. And you could just see the steam rolling out of his ears. But he was very polite in front of my friend. And we just had a very silent ride home until we dropped her off. And then he let me have it. You know, how could I be so irresponsible? Why didn't I make that bus on time? Why wasn't I home in time for dinner? Didn't they know that, that I was worried? Oh my goodness. Well, my mom, wanting to take care of me, met me in the kitchen with a big plate of dinner. And I made the mistake of saying to her, oh mom, I already ate. We stopped at McDonald's. That was not probably the smartest thing to do. She sat me right down at the table with a big plate of liver and onions, which I absolutely detest. Oh, I hate liver and onions. I know some of you love liver and onions. I hate it. And so on a very full stomach, I had to I had to somehow force down a plate of liver and onions, and I think it was mashed potatoes and peas. Ugh. I was so mad at my parents. I mean, couldn't they understand that I have been doing something really good, getting ready to be a candy striper and help people out in the nursing home and volunteer? And it wasn't my fault I missed the bus. I mean, it just is one of those things that happened. You know, some days I thought it's easier to love a stranger. It's easier to love my next door neighbor than my parents. I was questioning their authority at this time as a teenager, especially when they made what I thought were really dumb decisions. You know, I, I find it comforting to understand and remember that Jesus also had a little bit of problem with his parents growing up. Do you remember the time when he and his parents were in Jerusalem to celebrate a festival and his parents, you know, they all traveled together 10 days, one direction. They traveled amongst friends and neighbors and family, and they all traveled together. And they didn't keep really touch tight tabs on each other. So it was time to go home. Jesus's parents, Joseph and Mary, had gotten to the first night's camp, and they finally realized, where's Jesus? We don't see him. They start asking their friends, their family, their neighbors, have you seen Jesus? And he was 12 years old, left in a big city. And so Joseph and Mary, terrified, they went back to the city, which again, took another day to get back there. And then they started going up and down all the streets, going into all the buildings. And do you remember where they found him? In the temple. And he basically kind of sassed them. And he says, well, where else would I be? I'm in my father's house. And then later on as an adult, Jesus hadn't started his public ministry, but he was at a wedding with his mother, Mary. And the wedding host had run out of wine, which was a really big no-no. You don't run out of wine, especially when you're nowhere near the end of a wedding. And so Mary says to Jesus, you know, you could turn this water into wine and help these people out. And he grumbled at her. He didn't want to start his ministry so early publicly. He wasn't ready for it. But he honored his mother. And he turned the water into wine. So what does it mean in today's world to honor your father and your mother? Well, let's take a look at one of our local church couples, Jason and Michelle Copemans, when they tell us, how they expect their kids to honor them as mothers and fathers. So when I think about what it means for children to honor their mother and father, I think about some of the values that we try to instill in our kids and what, how they interact with us. So things like uh, trust and listening and respect and just our interactions uh, together with them. We try uh, 
I think parents try to model what good relationships look like and how um, people should interact with each other. And uh, those are, that, that's, that's where I start to think about um, how, how children can honor their father and mother. I believe, would like to believe that we are instilling values and behaviors in our children so that when they're not with us, that they go out and are behaving and being respectful to others. You think about them going out with their friends, going to a store, an example, um, they're greeted by the greeter. We hope that they greet them back very friendly and smile with them, or they're in the store and somebody um, over the way drops something and they ask if they can help them to pick it up. Just um, instilling in that they're being respectful and behaving the way that we would behave, that we're just making sure that we're instilling those into our children too. Honoring your mother and your father means loving them, helping them, spending time with them. Now, I was fortunate. I had good parents. They were strict, but they did not abuse me. But what if your parents mistreated you? How are you supposed to honor them? Well, in 2017, the Administration for Children and Families, which is a government agency, reported that 674,000 children had been mistreated by their parents. Now, these parents who abuse their children show us exceptions to the Fifth Amendment because they did not treat their children in a loving way like is expected. And abused children, even as adults, they may need to put up boundaries to make themselves safe around the abusive parent. Now, healing might be possible. Ther therapy can help. Uh, Bible verses, scripture, Bible study can help. You know, Jesus taught his followers to love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who persecute you. Now, this doesn't mean that you just excuse an abusive parent's abuse, but praying for them might help you. Pray for their happiness. Pray for blessings for them. Pray for their health because it's really, really hard to stay angry at a person that you are praying for regularly. Well, author and religious leader Joyce Meyer was abused by her father for years while her mother looked the other way. But over the years, she found that she was able to reconcile her relationship with her parents and even take care of them as they got into their old age. And she suggested praying for those people who are hard to love, as it might be abusive parents, pray for them. She says it takes time. It goes, forgiveness happens in degrees. And she said even at the end of their lives, when she was taking care of them, she didn't feel like she says this ooey gooey loving feeling but she felt good knowing she was doing what God wanted her to do, which in her case, honor her father and mother meant to reconcile to the point where she could be cordial to them and she could help take care of them. Forgiving an abusive parent has got to be difficult and not everybody is going to choose to do this and that's okay. But therapy, prayer, Bible study, all of these can help you gain some freedom from your past. So in these cases, what does it mean to honor your mother and your father? They may have abused you. Well, how does this look? Well, it means treat them with respect and importance. It means you don't belittle them, get even with them, curse them, or speak terribly about them even if they deserve it. Honor your father and your mother. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the primary meaning of the fifth commandment. We haven't really hit on it. The primary meaning has to do with elderly parents. 
And the whole idea behind honoring your mother and your father, making them important, had to do when they were vulnerable, when they were older and unable to take care of themselves or to um, raise enough money to buy food or do whatever work they need to do. Now, adult children have been living with their elderly parents or next door to them for decades, centuries, forever. It wasn't until just recently in history where we had ways, other ways of taking care of elderly parents. So in the 1800s, there were nursing homes that were started. At the very beginning, they were very bad. Um, then in the 1900s, we ended up having social security benefits come into play where elderly people would be able to get financial assistance and medical help. But these are all new developments. And today we're learning that Social Security and Medicare aren't enough to live on. And 45% of baby boomers, and I'm one of the last baby boomers, have saved less than $25,000 for retirement. So out of necessity, their old adult children are gonna have to step up again once more and help their parents out financially, emotionally, and physically if they aren't already doing that. Honoring your parents means to take care of them in their older days, in their older years. Now, Jesus does not specifically mention all of the Ten Commandments. He does talk about six of them. This is one of them, and he mentions it twice. But we're going to look at the time when he mentions um, the Fifth Commandment in the book of Mark, chapter 7. So let's see what that's all about. And it ends up, we are introduced to a, a new concept, which is interesting, called Corbin. So the religious leaders, the Pharisees at the time, had created their own special rule. They were very good at that. They, they were already, you know, all of these Jewish law laws, but they like to make additional rules. So they had created a special rule to get more money for the church and for themselves, and they called it Corbin. So Corbin means a special financial gift to God. Now, this doesn't sound that bad until you hear the next part. You see, the religious leaders taught the people that if they donated money or property to the church, they couldn't use this money or property if their elderly parents needed it in the future. It would be like me say, to saying to you, take all your money out of your bank and out of your retirement account and give it to the church. And if your parents need any help in the future, oh, well, your money went to God. So that's Corbin. You did a good job, Corbin. Oh, my goodness, those Pharisees. God never intended that generosity towards the church would turn into a twisted way to dishonor mothers and fathers. That's never God's intention. And Jesus was furious with these religious leaders. He told them, you say that if adult children declare that their money or property is Corbin, which means devoted to God, they no longer have to support their parents financially. You have used your own artificial rules to destroy God's commandment to honor parents. He was that angry with the Pharisees, the religious leaders. He reminded them that God commanded all people to honor their father and their mother. And if you create a, an artificial rule to get in the way of the big Ten Commandments, you're doing it wrong. And what I love about Jesus is that he practiced what he preached. Do you remember when he was dying on the cross? And his mother Mary was there right at the foot of the cross along with his disciple John. And Jesus, in all of his agony, realizes that he needs his mother to be honored. He needs his mother to be taken care of. Now, scholar, by biblical scholars are fairly certain at this point, Joseph is dead, her husband. So she really is going to need support. And so Jesus says from the cross, in agony, he says to his mother, woman, here is your son, meaning John, the disciple. 
And then to John, he said, here is your mother. He was asking John to honor Mary as if she were his own mother. And John did. He took Mary home. He took care of her financially, physically, emotionally until the day that she died. It makes me wonder, who is God calling us to take care of as if they were our own parent? Did you know that today, 22% of the elderly are considered elder orphans? And this means that they don't have a spouse or any children to take care of them. And the majority of these elder orphans don't even have a designated caregiver. They don't have like uh, a niece or nephew or a cousin or a neighbor or a friend or anybody who has said, I will help you um, in the case of an emergency. I wonder if God is calling us through the fifth commandment to care for the elder orphans who live in our communities. I wonder if you ever thought about visiting these elder orphans, maybe in the nursing home, maybe in their homes in your neighborhood, maybe in our churches. Start a relationship with them. You can help them mow their lawn, do their dishes, take them to doctor's appointments. You can listen to them, tell the stories of their life. You can pray with them. You can read the Bible with them. You can take them to church. There's so many ways that you can honor your father and your mother, meaning the elderly in our community, by taking care of the elder orphans in our midst. Because one day, you may be the elder orphan. And how will God sustain you? By calling people to honor you, to take care of you, to listen to you, and to love you. Honor your father and your mother. Amen.